One of the oldest types of servomotor feedbacks is the Hall effect or commutation pulse sensor. This feedback generates three square wave pulses, which are intended to align with each of the three motor phases. When the position of the commutation pickup is changed, the alignment of the feedback signals also changes. These signals need to be aligned correctly for a servomotor to be functional on the drive. Aligning these signals dynamically requires a complicated setup to backdrive the motor and use an oscilloscope to display the motor phases and feedback signals while it's running. Static alignment provides a much easier method by simply locking the motor and wiggling the shaft to look for a toggle state. These commutation states can be seen in the data display of the generic incremental encoder selection. There are a minimum of three signals listed as H1, 2, and 3. To test they are working, simply turn the motor by hand and make sure that the first three signals are changing between high and low. The caret symbols show the last signal to have changed. If the commutation feedback has complement lines, then make sure that all six signals are changing and that H4 through 6 are exactly opposite of H1 through 3. If any of the signals are stuck in the high or low position while the feedback is rotated, then it could indicate a bad connection or broken feedback device. If the feedback is testing well, then it's time to check the alignment. Lock the motor with the manufacturer specific lockup pattern, then wiggle the shaft and look for a toggling pulse, seen here. We must record the correct direction of the toggling pulse either high to low or low to high, using the motor forward direction as our guide. Siemens motors are clockwise, and the H1 pulse is toggling from high to low in the clockwise direction. The alignment pattern is then written like this or like this if complement lines are included. When we switch the lockup to minus W plus U, you will see how the H3 pulse has the toggle, and it's changing from low to high in the motor forward direction. The alignment pattern is then written like this. When we lock a motor, each lockup pattern has a unique place on this graph. We can then see how the high, low, and toggling states translate to our two previous lockup combinations. If the commutation gets out of alignment, then the toggle point will not change like we need to see. Or the pattern will be completely wrong. Depending on the motor brand, some commutation signals are aligned to a line to neutral lockup, which uses all three switches. When we try the standard line to line lockup using only two switches, there's no toggle. But when we add the third switch to create a neutral lockup, the toggle is seen. Make sure you know which type of lockup to use with your motor. To set the alignment, we simply lock the motor and adjust the sensor back and forth until we are as close as possible to the toggling edge. It does not matter if we end up on the high or low side of the edge, just that the edge is close. Secure the alignment position and check the toggle once again from the motor shaft side to verify it's correct. The motor should be locked tight and it should not take much torque to see the high and low toggle. 